So, did you know that Barney is coming back? Because neither did I. So let's talk about it. What's up everybody? My name is Shantoria. Welcome to the video and I pray you all are doing well. So today's video was supposed to be about the music and Barney and the thought process behind it. And a section of this video is I will be talking about the I Love You song. But this will be more about Mattel bringing back the Barney franchise. And it makes sense considering that the 2000s is coming back around and Gen Z is getting older and reminiscing. I was actually surprised that I learned that Mattel had bought the Barney franchise. I guess they wanted to buy something since they couldn't get brats and what a brand to purchase another one with a history of petty lawsuits <laughs> i promise you guys i love barney okay if you guys want to know what i'm talking about i'll link my barbie versus brats video in the description below but watch this first so mattel is planning to bring back barney in the form of a cgi animated tv show that is scheduled to premiere sometime in 2024 and they revealed the new design of barney and it was not received well i mean he it it don't look good, but he don't look bad. You know, he don't look good, but he don't look that bad. I mean, you know, I'm so used to the human in the costume form of Barney that, you know, it's it's whatever. And also, I'm comparing it to the cinematic disaster that Sony did with Sonic. So, it's a scale of meh to mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, it's fine, but there's room for improvement. Many were tweeting that Barney had gotten plastic surgery. They even used the hashtag not my Barney, cause same. But it's hard to, you know, there's always gonna be backlash or some form of uproar whenever you change something that people are so used to seeing in a different way. Like I said, he looks okay, but you know, there's room for improvement. And one way they can improve my guy is his height. Don't take away my tall person representation. My homie was tall. And speaking of representation, Daniel Kaluuya, the actor famous for Get Out and the film Nope, his production company is currently in the beginning stages of doing the live action version of Barney. And when I tell you when I heard this information, when I learned this during research, I was like, what? 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 Like, I, cause I'm so curious to see how this film is gonna turn out. Cause I, cause when I heard this, I think of, cause I think of it in a sense of like Kevin Hart, for example, him doing a more serious film, but then there's still layers of comedy throughout the film to make it a little bit lighter. And I can't help but really think that that's what's gonna happen with the Barney live action film. And in an interview, Kaluuya mentions that he knows that the roles and films that he's been featured in and played in will affect how people view the film. And it, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm actually very excited to see it. And he mentions that he wants to take a more serious tone for the new Barney film, considering that Barney himself is known as this happy-go-lucky guy. And at the time of Barney's prime in the 90s, he very much was the polar opposite of the edgy, I do what I want, mom, free spirit that was really popular at the time. And, <laughs> and Barney is known for being very lovey-dovey and teaching kids emotional intelligence that they thought at the time was not something a man should be like. In the I Love You, I Hate You documentary, a father had mentioned that he did not like Barney, which is putting it very lightly, by the way. <laughs> very lightly. Stating that it wasn't something that he could enjoy with his daughter. But Cheryl did say, and I quote, Barney was written to really connect right to children. We want adults to approve of what we do, but it's really not for adults, it's just for kids. And Cheryl created this show for children like her son Patrick, who are very high energy, and parents just wanted their child to sit down long enough to really enjoy something that they're watching, or just so that they can go do something for like a few seconds. And there's nothing wrong with that. The issue is, is that I, as a kid who watched Barney, I don't remember learning anything at all. I just only remember playing the same musical number over and over and over and over. Which, by the way, I watched two episodes of Barney. Two, by the way. I was only able to watch two because in every in the two episodes I watched, there was nine songs being sung. Keep in mind that this show is possibly running about 22 minutes. 
an episode. So there's nine songs in 22 minutes on top, not even counting the intro and the outro song. So, oh my God, it was just so annoying. And then it couldn't, there was no real focus either. It's not too much of a focus either in the lesson being learned. And honestly, it wasn't really much of a lesson to be learned if I'm being honest, completely honest, or at least it wasn't executed that well, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Steve Burns, who was the host of Blue's Clues, comments about Barney having a lack of more teachable, serious tone within the show. Barney, elect irony, cynicism, and grit. All the things that I, as an adult, came to understand the world was about. It's not just about Barney being on a children's television show that makes him bashable. I suppose maybe that is because the children's television like Sesame Street. There's something broken about Grover. And there's something broken about Bert. And there's something broken about absolutely every single one of us. But there's nothing broken about Barney. And after hearing Steve say this, I begin to wonder and think about what I have been taught about growing up. And that it was really just a push for people to grow up. And we are taught to lose that childlike wonder that we so admire in children and why is that so? And that's something that really just is mind-boggling to me and I really think about even knowing that life can have many struggles and requires so much sacrifice, I still don't... And it's really just an interesting topic, honestly. It's just an interesting topic. And I understand wanting to teach children lessons for the most part grounded in reality. And maybe Barney can come at it through the lens of teaching children to reframe tough situations. Not to ignore the pain, but to teach children that it's okay to be sad. Feel your emotions. Have a good cry. And I love seeing parents on TikTok teaching their children emotional intelligence and really how to just be very vocal about how they feel and to try to understand where their parents are coming from. And I truly do believe that Barney can be that piece of children's media that teaches toddlers that type of emotional intelligence and that amount of empathy and help children start to develop self-awareness and be very, I guess, um, selfless and care, and care about their fellow classmate because that is... Just something that kids are not known to do is be kind. <laughs> They're children are known to be blunt, honest and love, but very blunt. And some some of them are a little too honest. Okay. With Daniel Kaluuya producing the new live action Barney, I hope that he incorporates some of this into the film. The emotional intelligence children be more empathetic towards each other because. I think that that is something that is necessary for today's youth and could really thrive in today's time. I know I said a lot and I honestly can continue to talk about this more, but I'm but I'm going to stop to stay on topic. And if you would like to see that I Love You, You Hate Me documentary, you can on Peacock. I very much enjoyed watching it, learning about the history of Barney, how it came to be, and the historic Barney bashing. I honestly... I. I remember watching videos of people burning. <laughs> I remember watching videos of people burning Barney and Elmo plushies on YouTube. And I thought nothing of it as a kid. I mean, hello, teenagers like to play with fire. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but what I find so odd and so crazy is that the iconic Barney song, the one that Barney is known for, the character himself is known for. Heck, the title of the freaking documentary is not mentioned in the film. So let's talk about it. So the iconic children's song was written by Lee Bernstein. Well, she wrote the lyrics. The musical aspect itself comes from a traditional folk song titled This Old Man, which is currently in the public domain. And Bernstein loved this song growing up as a kid and she sings her version of the song to her children all the time. Bernstein soon granted Warren Publishing House Incorporated permission to publish her work in their 1983 collection of songs book titled Piggyback Songs. Eight years later in 1991, Bernstein's daughter rushed into her room and told her mother that their song was on TV. She tried recording it but failed and Bernstein was actually home recovering from a surgery according to the article I read 
And and when she was well and able, she searched high and low, calling all the TV stations to try to figure out what programming her daughter was watching, but sadly was unsuccessful. It wasn't until an employee's two-year-old granddaughter started singing the song in her family-owned business when Bernstein decided to call a lawyer. So a copyright infringement was already filed a year prior in 1993, so I'm guessing Bernstein found out in 1994, but it went unnoticed until Barney stopped singing the I Love You song, even though there was no form of order stopping them, and I don't remember hearing that or seeing that at all, and I refused to watch more episodes of Barney to find out, so... So the people behind the music and Barney switched around the few of the lyrics, but it was obvious that Bernstein was the true author. And what I find so interesting is the back and forth between both parties because the publishing company Warren Publishing claimed that Lee Bernstein signed away her rights when she agreed to the book's publication, but Bernstein states that it was only a one-time use type of deal. And Lions Group in Richardson, Texas, who owns Barney, claimed that the firm paid Bernstein for the rights to use I Love You and Barney's videos and shows after an unsuccessful extensive search for the copyright on the lyrics heard by the children of a co of a co-creator of Barney. Which I find is a very contradictory statement. I'm guessing this was after she had filed the lawsuit, but I'm not quite sure about this one. Stuart Dunwoody of Davis Wright, who represented Lyons, stated that Bernstein initially received seventy five hundred dollars plus in every several year payment of two thousand dollars and considering that barney made an estimated fifty million dollars alone on licensing it's it's fair to say that it was not a fair trade (laughs) and she sure was not fairly compensated enough and i'm very curious to know if Mattel will include the I Love You song in the show itself or possibly in the promotion of the show itself. The same with Daniel Kaluuya's live action version of Barney. Why would we even call it live action? Barney is a freaking man in a costume. He's already live action. Mattel's version is the one that's the odd one out, but whatever. (laughs) But what do you guys think of Barney coming back into children's media and what are your hopes for the franchise? Did you watch it? Do you remember any songs other than the I Love You song? For me, it's Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Goddison, please shine down on me. Let me know in the comments down below. And I pray you all have a blessed rest of your day and an awesome rest of your week. Peace out.